1879, three years after George Armstrong Custer made his last stand, Justin made his first pair of boots. The same year that Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, Justin was inventing a brand that would be a shining example of quality and craftsmanship for generations. Go west, young man. Horace Greeley. In 1879, a young man from Indiana took that advice. He traveled to a town in Texas called Spanish Fort. His name was Herman Joseph Justin. He was a man with a wealth of ambition in his heart, but only 25 cents in his pockets. In those days, Spanish Fort was a rough and rowdy town, one of the last stopping places for cowboys as they drove their cattle north on the Chisholm Trail. H.J. found work at a barber shop and quickly discovered that he had quite a talent for patching cowboy boots. One day, he went to the owner of the shop and said, if I can just get enough money to buy a few leather hides, I'll make the world set up and take notice that H.J. Justin can make the best boots in the world. With those few words and a $35 stake from the barber, the Justin Boot Company was born. Next to his gun, a man's boots are his most prized possession, often spelling the difference between life and death. Early Justin Advertisement. Joe Justin's shop was located next to the local saloon. So after a few drinks, a cowboy would mosey in, have his feet measured, and then hit the Chisholm Trail. On the way back down the trail, the cowboy would pick up his brand new boots. In those days, a custom-made pair of Justin's cost $8.50 a pair, about a week's pay for the average cowboy. But they were worth every penny, helping cowboys to fend off nasty rattlesnakes, prickly cactus, and unruly weather. A year after he had started out, Joe Justin had sold $1,000 worth of boots, but he was still a long way off from fame and fortune. There are wings to the spirit, those cowboy boots. And who doesn't want wings? Foster Harris. Joe's business grew rapidly, and so did his family. He married a doctor's daughter named Annie, and seven children followed. The business received a big boost when Annie came up with a new marketing tool, a fit kit that included a tape measure and a foot measuring chart. Cowboys would take these kits along with them on their travels and loan them to their fellow cowhands. Soon, orders were coming in through the mail from all across the country. I think it's appropriate that the first salespeople for Justin Cowboy Boots were the cowboys themselves. Cowboys would give you the big horse laugh if the suggestion was made that they wear anything else but Justin Boots. Nakona News, 1909. In time, the company outgrew Spanish Fort, and Joe and his family followed the railroad to Nakona, Texas. By 1915, H.J. Justin & Sons, as the company was now called, was shipping boots to 36 states. Canada, Mexico, Cuba, Australia, why even New York City. The reputation of the boots' quality was so great that each boot order was fully paid for at an average price of $12 before a scrap of leather was even cut. Joe died in 1918, but he had built a company and a legacy that would live on. In less than 30 years, he had gone from a penniless youth to the head of a proud company with sales of over $100,000. With bands, banners, and cheers, the famous shoe and boot factory of H.J. Justin and Sons will be moved to Fort Worth from Nakona, Texas. Fort Worth Press, 1925. In 1925, the company moved to Fort Worth, Texas. It turned out to be the perfect fit for both. Fort Worth helped Justin, and Justin helped boost Fort Worth's image as the city where the West began. There were some hiccups, a little thing called the Great Depression, and believe it or not, Justin golf shoes. But over time, the company's size, product line, and sales grew steadily. In 1939, Justin moved to his present day home at Hemphill and Daggett, and in 1950, a new leader took over a man who would usher in a new era of extraordinary success, John Justin, Jr. My hat's off to you and your boot builders. I thank you for the fine footwear. Charles M. Russell. John Justin, Jr. brought so much to the Justin Boot Company. New ownership, groundbreaking ideas, and boundless energy. 
John was a civic leader, a family man, and a true innovator. In 1954, he invented one of the classic boot styles, the Roper, based on an old military last with a shorter heel than the other cowboy boots. The Roper not only helped calf ropers compete in the rodeo, but it became one of the most popular styles in the history of Western footwear. You're my boot maker. I've got lots of your boots at my ranch. I've even worn them in some of my pictures. Ronald Reagan. The Justin Boot Company has done more for the cowboy, more for rodeo, and more for Western heritage over the decades than any other company in America. John Justin Jr. had a passion for Fort Worth and for our stock show and for all his hard-nosed business sense, had a soft spot in his heart for the cowboy down in his luck. More than once, he pulled some money out of his own pocket or let a cowboy throw a bedroll on his living room floor. You might say Mr. Justin had a tough soul but a tender feel, just like Justin Boots. They're beautiful boots, and everyone who's seen them just gasps a little, and I say, Fort Worth, Texas. Justin's. Bob Hope. The Justin Boot Company continued to grow after merging with Agme Brick Company and becoming Justin Industries in 1972. Over the years, the company has added the Nakona Boot Company, Chippewa Shoe Company, Tony Lama, and Justin Original Work Boots. But even with all the changes, the original principles the company was founded on, unmatched integrity, quality, value, always remain. I've worn Justin since I first walked on a stage, and today I still won't wear anything else. Charlie Pride. Today, cowboys wear Justin's, college kids wear Justin, construction workers wear Justin, celebrities, poets, and even presidents are wearing Justin. Justin makes footwear for about everybody, and Justin does it in a great Western style. You can count on it. Justin is a true Texas legend, part of the fabric of our culture. George W. Bush. When the Justin Boot Company came to my attention as a possible investment, I took a close look at it and really liked what I saw. This was my kind of company with a powerful brand known all over the world, solid management and great products that people love. So in 2000, Justin Brands became a part of the Berkshire Hathaway family of companies. I'm proud to be associated with the Justin name, and I'm confident that the next 125 years of the company's history will take Justin to even greater heights of success. It is my wish that I might leave behind me an institution which will uphold the standards and spirit of the true West. Herman Joseph Justin. The Justin story is one that is truly representative of the American dream. It's a story of a man with a few cents in his pocket who built a company that provided for his family, employed thousands of people, and left a legacy of quality and footwear that is unmatched. Today, we all know that generations of Justins are looking down on us and smiling. Well done, Justin Boots. You've made America proud. Oh, <laughs>